Hey, this is Garth, and I just, um, I'm just i taking the last day of school here to take a look at the online textbook. Um, this was built in Wikispaces. Uh, started about 11 years ago, so it's been a long time. Lots of kids involved around, uh, I'm going to guess here, about 1,600 kids have participated in building this book. Um, I started with Mike Pennington when he was a teacher at Chardon. Um, and then when Mike moved on to a tech director's job, uh, Dublin, Ohio, um, their middle school, Davis Middle School, under the teacher directed of Travis Armstrong, uh, began to add a little bit to this book as well. So this book has been around for a while, and Wikispaces is closing July 31st of this year. So this will disappear. Um, I will have to figure out a way. I've downloaded it. I'm looking at possible alternatives, but it will never look the same. So I thought I would take 10 minutes or so and kind of walk through the book, talk a little bit about um, the book. So I have a recording of it the way it looked at the end. So obviously the book was written by students for students, so virtually everything other than two pages is kid created. Um, the two pages would be this home page. Um, this is Mr. Holman only or Mr. Armstrong or whoever it may be. They're the only people that can access this and make changes to it. So this page was locked. Um, some cool things we did, we were interviewed in California um, on a talk show with the live studio at Ants and a bunch of students were involved. Um, we got tweeted out by Ashton Kutcher. Um, to about 7 million people, which was kind of cool. We've been in a couple TED Talks, um, a couple books written about what was going on here, uh, most notably probably Alan November's uh, Who Owns the Learning, who predominantly was about this um, or used this particular, as uh, this book as his uh, concluding part, so it was the last part of the book. Um, and then Dr. William Kist uh, wrote a book called The Global School and referenced this and wrote a little bit about it as well. Um, the only other page was the Mr. Home and Mr. Pennington page that we controlled. And we kind of explained how this book got started. Um, and so this all began, um, I guess we can look up here, 2006. So this has been around, uh, it's 2018 right now. So for 12 years, um, it kind of all got started um, by these papers up on the board where we did like a, almost like a mapping of the year. What did we learn? And then we decided to use Wiki to turn that into a student-created textbook. So it all started with this basic question. How do you engage students to uh, and allow them to show you what they know? So we kind of started thinking about technology in 2006 and what was possible, and we came up with the idea of kids writing their own books. So this is what we, we got. Although uh, the book does digital footprints and what is history and economics and prehistory and ancient civ, um, our predominantly... Um, our curriculum changed in those 12 years, and we mainly focused on the Middle Ages and this last part, so the Renaissance Reformation, Scientific Revolution, Exploration. So we'll just take a peek at some of these pages and kind of see how they were put together and what was going on. So in the Middle Ages, um, you had a brief overview, and again, this is all written by kids. There were 65 edits over the time for this. Some of the images were put in by me, in this case this one was. Um, most of the links are kid-created. Um, we've got some mores made by kids about what a coronation was. So they embedded some s'mores. Now, obviously, this video has disappeared, it looks like, off YouTube. But um, that happens. Um, so they kind of went through what that was. We got some PowerPoints kids created to kind of interview, and this was 2012. So you'll just kind of see this page um, was generally the very brief overview of what the Middle Ages was. Um, the cause of the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, you've got some kids' drawings, you've got links. Again, all the links are created by kids. Um, this is pretty text-based. Um, you're not going to see too many videos um, that are not kid-created, but these were um, Amy Burvell, who was the time out of Hawaii. Um, she did a lot of videos called um, the History Teachers, and these videos were parody songs. That led to a lot of our students doing parodies, which we'll get to. Um, so these are two of hers and kind of tells you when the kids did them. So last edit on this, according to this, was uh, 2014. And then we kind of go into the individual things. So under the Vikings, um, again, you got a plug-in not supported, which I could turn on. It's just not there right now. you got imagery. Um, one thing I do like and that we taught the kids to do, um, and I hope this one works, and it does, um, we talked about ethical use of using imagery. So if you look, uh, virtually all of the images have a subtitle and a CC, and then they're linked to the Creative Commons license of where they got that image. So we were kind of teaching the fundamentals of um, digital ethics. What can you use? What can you take off the web and use? 
Um, we had kids do bi bibliographies of where they got information, but we didn't make this very formal. So this was just kind of kids adding links or adding things that they had kind of used to get in there. Um, so each page as we go, this, in, this page is rather interesting to me, and there's two stories with this I kind of like to tell. Um, so this page, a kid was looking at the Middle Ages, which had Vikings and the Crusades and Magna Carta and the Black Death and Spanish Inquisition. He's like, there's really nothing on technology. Can I build my own page? So we'll use this one to go into the history a little bit and look. So if we go back to the very beginning, um, you can see that this page was started in 2013, and we'll look at what it looked like. That's all it had. And that's one thing I'll miss. Um, we can click through and see each version of what he saved as he built. Um, and you can see deletes and, and things. And I was using a whole class period, so sometimes he wrote a lot, um, sometimes he didn't. Um, but you can begin to see the page take shape over, uh, in this case, several days or a few days where he's getting the Creative Common license. So this is one kid basically building a page. And again, we could go through the whole thing. We'll go to the newest version just to go back. So over the years, it became this from what he started with. So there's the chain mall, which they had originally, but you can see very different where it's located and what's been added since. That's a key feature. It's kind of cool to be able to go back and see every edit. Now, you can do that in Google Docs or other things, but for right now, it's pretty interesting to me. I don't really know a software that does the same type of things that a wiki does. Um, but he kind of built his own. And what I found really interesting is he picked this thing link to embed, not knowing that this thing link was created and made public on the web through thing link by a student I could have the periods wrong because this was five years ago, but I believe she was in um, like fifth period and he was in eighth. So she literally built this thing link, added it to the public library in thing link, and then he turned around and said, well, this is the best one I can use to talk about castle um, attacks. So he ended up picking another student's thing link, which is pretty cool. They're actually finding each other's work um, online and building. All the links, again, are created by kids where they wanted to go. Kids started to build their own movie. This will probably be pretty loud, but um, obviously I'm not going to lose all these. So, uh, is loud. Um, so here is a kid. He does a time lapse um, where he builds a catapult in his house um, over, I think, four days. And you kind of tell because now the garage door is shut and he's wearing a coat. You can tell there's a little bit of time change. Um, but ultimately, at the very end, he creates his own little catapult and he's testing it out in his front yard um, which is pretty funny um, as you go through again another video kind of disappeared you know that stuff happens because they use things from the public but each page has its own little story to tell um, I guess I can't really go through each page and talk about each page but um, you know, these wordles were created by 300 kids at two different middle schools, so he used Google Docs and linked the stuff and did some cool things. You know, the Magna Carta, I believe we've got some imagery kids drew. Um, we've got more wordles. We've got, um, uh, again, thing links that are embedded that you can read more about certain events. You know, you get to the Black Death, and the Black Death was one of the more interesting to topics, according to the kids, and I think you see more of a like textbook taking shape here okay first so cool kids interviewed people all over the world and created their own documentaries so this particular interview was done by um, some students and they interviewed a professor from UC Davis in California um, this is a pretty cool one um, again Creative Commons licensed um, the text is now written more like a book though so the spread of the Black Death kind of what is it you know, what is the Black Death? You know, how, what are the effects on the people of Europe? How did it impact trade? So a little more, a lot of these are saying image contains YouTube, so we're just okaying it. But the images were again, a lot of thing links you begin to see, political cartoons by kids. Um, this is a pretty powerful page. And they're all similar to this as we go on now. There seems to be more of like an introduction. The kids started to get more like, okay, here are the causes. Here's how it worked. Here were the effects. So they began to kind of follow a more formal structure. That was created, created on their own. Um, again, you got kids picking 
this particular was a Holocaust video, or excuse me, a poem, and they kind of related to see connections between history and a broader picture of the world. The Renaissance is probably one of our more famous videos. This one has about a quarter of a million views on it. Um, but again, you see that format of, okay, there's an introduction, there's humanism, there's art, there's inventions. Um, another student created, I mean, both of these are student created videos um, that are on YouTube that will still survive. They the just will no longer be a- inside this textbook. Um, and again, a PowerPoint, not too many of those. Those was a big deal a long time ago, but they kind of fell out of favor with the students. There was other things became relevant, like thing links or, um, whoops, I don't know what I clicked there. Um, like thing links. I guess it's because it's not big enough to click the box that says accept. Um, But anyway, they're there, and if you click them, you can go see them. That's probably what it's doing here. Now, these are kids from a different school. So these were done by kids at, um, in this case, Chardon local school. So another school impacting. I guess that's good to kind of see those. Um, I don't even remember what this is. So this is a kid's YouTube on the Renaissance. Another one looks like they use something similar to a Paltoon. I can't be sure what it is. Um, And if we go on, uh, you know, the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, I already did this one. I'm sorry. Uh, The Reformation was very similar. Again, you see that common theme of now background causes, and it just depends on how they wrote it. And and again, in this case, I don't know how many this has, 154 edits. Kids constantly are editing, constantly adding links. One student said there's not enough on his background. So, you know, somewhere down the road, he decided to build his own page that just kind of talked about the key vocabulary and then give you the background of this guy, what really was going on. A lot more information than most people would ever want to know, at least in a seventh grade social studies class that I'm trying to teach. But he was interested and he wanted to go deeper, so we allowed that and let him build. You know, you get the golden age of West Africa. Again, I think we see that form. It looks a little more like a textbook might look as you get through the pages. Again, videos embedded all, Creative Commons still. Um, Lots of links to places. Here's a song the kids thought was cool, worth looking at. Here was more about slavery. Um, You know, we can go to, I guess we'll just go to the exploration. They all, I guess I kind of wanted to see all the pages because they may never look like this again. So even if I'm just skimming down them, uh, at least I visually see what they look like. Um, So you've got, again, the exploration and kids created their own charts and graphs. You know, they used draw to do those so that they weren't breaking copyright. Um, So again, all Creative Commons, again, cartoons. Cartoons earlier were a big deal. They wanted to do cartoons. As time passed, the cartoons got dropped. I mean, if you go back, probably every page has cartoons on it um, at some point or drawings. I did decide I'm just going to click on all these pages so we can kind of visually scrolling through see what the pages look like now here's the catch on this um what was that the catch on this is there's almost 700 pages here so a lot of these links i don't know where this takes us to as an example let's just see so this is actually going out on the web so that's not it but a lot of these links are actually links to other pages in the book so there, there are, even though it looks like there's 20, whatever, 20 pages over here, off these there are tons of pages, like this one, I guess is a good example. This doesn't appear anywhere on the left side table of contents, but it's a page created by a kid. There's lots of those. Um, I want to say there's a couple hundred pages to this book, although we're just looking at these main ones. So Greece and Rome, we'll kind of backtrack. Um, we had a little bit you know, about Greece and Rome. The kids kind of built the page, but again, Greece and Rome is switched in our curriculum a little bit. Uh, these were more or closer, you know, 2014-15. Where um, my Rome public ancient Greece? Let's see. I know we didn't like the way it was, and we started to rebuild these and then kind of switched content so we didn't go too deep. Um, but they had a general start. Um, the prehistory and, and human, when we first started teaching... Um, or when we first started the book, we did these things. So they were part of our curriculum. So I really do like these pages, although they aren't relevant to the content I teach anymore. But I'm glad we're going back and looking at these. Um, so these were c- created by kids, you know, way back 2008, 2006. Um, and each one, again, takes you somewhere. Now, this is a good example, too. This page um, says human migration 
but it's really got multiple pages going off. So you're really going to other pages. So some stuff about the rise of the agricultural society and the cause, and again, kids' cartoons and domestication. Um, these are download, like Word documents on readings um, that they wanted in there, and then images of guns, germs, and steel, something that we showed clips of and talked about. And we'll go back and take a look at that last page, too. Um, and then we had um, problems with living in a large group. Now, this became something we spent a lot of time on to try to look at the ideas over time. Um, what is the issues? Because these are broader issues in human society, you know, whether it be this image of extreme wealth and extreme poverty. Um, these became very powerful images to use with kids to talk about the, the uh, that. I don't know why I keep going back to this page. Sorry. Um, so anyway, um, all of these pages again link off and then we can go other places to learn more. So um, we got a couple more economics, so might as well take a look at them. Again, I don't remember all of these or what was on them. So here's the economics page where paper money and the Colombian exchange and mercantilism. So it's kind of the whole thing. And again, this is way back in 2008. Then our curriculum changed and we didn't teach that anymore, I think around 2009 or 10. So this page probably doesn't have a ton of edits because we never really went back to it. Some kids did, but it wasn't something we were using on a daily basis in the class. So um, I'm glad I clicked on economics. This I always thought was a good page. Um, they did a good job of explaining some key ideas about economics. So generally speaking, um, this is, uh, let me do, um, since I think I'm logged in as the owner, so I can kind of go, we'll go to a, oh, key terms. Um, let me just go to this because some of these were cool. So the, here's what I mean about pages you couldn't see. Here's a page on the Silk Road. Today is November 18th, oh, 2008. Obviously. Our names are... Okay, there's a podcast embedded from 2008 that's automatically began to play when we got on this page. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'll see. Now, here's the thing. I better download this because I know I don't have this anymore. So there are going to be thousands, I don't know if I can say thousands, but there's going to be hundreds of files that are probably going to disappear when this disappears um, because if you start to look, it's just going to take forever to go through each page. Now, I'm going to download multiple versions of this, but I'm not sure that all these files that are embedded and all the projects are going to carry on with it. If we go to a full page list, we'll kind of get a sense of all these pages, like we didn't see anything about the Hundred Year War or an overview of Christianity or anything about Alexander the Great um, or individual countries, which we have pages. Um, so I guess there's 85 different pages that have been created. So I was thinking hundreds, but 85 is a lot for kids. Stuff on the vending machine. Now let's just go look at this just to see it. All right, so they're talking about the enduring impacts of the ancient Greek vending machine and how vending machines have built down over time. Interesting stuff. Again, not a lot on the page, but the concept is kids were able to build and create things, um, you know, that I don't necessarily use too much anymore, but they were there. These things are there. There's information. Can you please call to... So um, this has been about 20 minutes, and I just got interrupted, but it does kind of give you at least an overview, and I'm going to just scroll through this so I can look at the pages that disappear because I won't remember all of these. You know, one on the Decameron and the uh, early Dark Ages and the pyramids, and there's a page on Emmett Till. Um, let's move on. Up the top, we got uh, enduring impacts of Asia, expert interviews, feudalism, the flagellants, um, just lots of pages of things, Greek mythology, Joan of Arc. Let me see that page. Not a ton on her, but we got a quote in there that's kind of cool. Um, what else we got? Knight's Diary. That was cool. It was a kid's project. Um, let's see if it shows up. It was his blog that he then turned into a web page as an example. Um, so this is a page that will disappear that is not linked. And yet, look at all the work a kid did to try to explain the life of being a knight. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, sad to see it go. Um, you know, the Mongols, we never talked about Mansa Musa. There's just a ton to this. 
Roman Empire, rise of agricultural society, we kind of looked at um, Roman horses, soldiers, so there's pages on everything. S uh, samurai weapons where they're comparing Japanese to uh, feudalism to European feudalism. Um, space menu, I don't know what that is. Technology of the Middle Ages, Black Death, another Black Death page that two kids did separately. Um, the Reformation. So at least visually, we've scanned through and kind of, at least I see the titles of pages. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'll plop this video up on the web, but the reality is it's more for me to go back and look at and say, what did they actually create? Because you're not going to see it all. Um, even if I download and save it, I, I assume I'll lose some of these things and how they work. But there's kind of an overview of this whole book. Um, I'll be sad to see it go. Um, but I will definitely be looking for an alternative way to bring this back to life and maybe start all over again. So uh, Wikispace is a good run while you were up and running, and I'm sad to see you go. But um, I'm glad I took the time, this 20 minutes, to kind of just walk through and look over what's been created by the students over 12 years. All right. Off for summer break. I'm officially done with my uh, 25th year, I think, of teaching middle school.